Lauren Haveman. I have been a member of the church for almost 11 years now. I'm married to Kelly Bergman, and we have three kids, Nora, who's seven, Micah, who's five, and Evie, who's two and a half. And the letter to the church is to us as a church, but also, um, I think, just the bigger church in general. So, dear church, I did not want to write this letter. In fact, I still don't want to write this letter. I think it's because we have a pretty complicated relationship. I grew up in a church just down the road, but a lot like this one. It was my second home. Lemonade after the service, dancing and jumping over air vents, giggling as my dress billowed up above my head, sneaking away with friends to explore all the hidden parts of the church while our parents stayed and talked forever. Sunday school every Sunday with my parents as teachers and leaders. Epic vacation Bible school, going with my dad, delivering flowers to people in the hospital or in nursing homes. Youth choir, kid and family time on Wednesday nights, confirmation, amazing camps in the summers and retreats during the school year, years spent volunteering in the junior high ministry while in high school small groups myself and mission trips. There was so much that was good, but there was a lot that was really hard too. Truth be told, I started volunteering as a, as a confirmation leader and then as a middle school leader because I desperately wanted to fit in, to feel like I belonged at my church. Our youth group was huge. It was fun. It was the place to be. But only if you were a kid from Edina. And I was not. Of course, they said everyone was welcome, but it never felt that way. Somehow the girl who'd been part of the church since she was two, the age my youngest is now, didn't feel like she belonged anymore. And I knew I wasn't the only one. None of my three younger siblings ever attended youth group, and I knew many kids from Edina and the surrounding suburbs who never felt cool enough to attend. After graduating high school, I chose to attend a Christian college on the other side of the country. It was a school that I loved, but I was also astounded by some of the rules that they said were biblically based that I had never known before. Why couldn't a woman be a pastor? I'd grown up with female pastors. Why was there no instrumental music in the service? Acapella music is beautiful, but so is piano and instruments, sometimes organs, and yes, definitely rock and pop music too. It was the first time I realized that church or Christian rules are not the same in different places and in different contexts. Alongside this was all the biology, chemistry, physics, and genetics that I was taking. My professors in the sciences were incredible people of faith who for the first time in my life encouraged and even demanded that we not take for granted what we had been told growing up. We had to dig, wrestle, research, and question. Thank goodness. It was in the science department that I realized the Bible is definitely not a science book, that God's creation and love for the world is so much bigger than how Genesis had previously been communicated to me. I mean, seriously, God is so amazing and creative that he created a world so complex that evolution is part of it. That is so much more awe-inspiring to me than my previous thought that, poof, there's a giraffe. From there, the questions grew bigger and much more important to me. Why did the church rules, as at least I had grown to learn them, or what the Bible said, as I'd been told it was interpreted, say that some people were more worthy of leadership positions, or of love, or of acceptance, or of freedom, or of justice? Don't get me wrong. I knew that God loved the entire world, all people, that Jesus loves all of us so much, and he loved so extravagantly and died such a death as to reconcile and save everyone who loves and trusts him. But looking around, my church and Christian community did not always reflect that. My friends who were gay were ostracized. Almost everyone around me, peers, mentors, professors, were white. And being female, it often seemed like I was somehow less than. Why was this my reality inside the church and Christian circles when the Bible says I and everyone else is lovingly and intentionally made in the image of God and that we are to be in community with each other? It's safe to say that as I've grown up, my relationship with the church has changed, as all relationships change. The more I learned about privilege, social justice, and history, admittedly a lot of history I'd never been told about before, the more my discomfort with the church grew. This last year, especially thanks to the leadership of Sarah Wilhelm Garbers and Christian Wynn, I've learned more heartbreaking truth of the things the white church in America has done in terms of creating and cementing a system of injustice in our country and to some extent around the world. 
I've listened with a heart that continues to break when people who proudly call themselves Christians speak or act in ways that demean or ignore the God-given humanity in others, sometimes even saying or doing these things in the so-called name of Jesus. I'm at a place in my life where it's hard to be truthful to others that I am a Christian, that I go to church. And this has nothing to do with me being uncomfortable with Jesus or being ashamed of my own faith, but it's because it's harder and harder to live in the increasingly negative stereotype of how Christians treat other people. And so, dear church, I write this letter. I'm tired. I'm discouraged. I'm embarrassed of the witness that we Christians collectively have been to the world over the years. Yes, there has been a lot of good, but we cannot turn blind eyes to the harm. The thing is, though, I'm also hopeful. I know that our God promises to complete good works in us and through us. I pray that we can come together to be light, to be a safe place, to be encouragement, to be welcoming and uplifting, to be people who through our love for others can demonstrate God's love. I pray that our congregation will be so unlike any of these negative stereotypes. I pray that we can become a people who are marked by the Holy Spirit, people who love, who are joyful, who strive for real peace and work for justice and that's not just the absence of conflict, that we're people who are patient and who are kind, who seek to do good for others, even if that good is not in our own self-interest, that we are people who are faithful to the God we love and trust, and that we can also be gentle both with ourselves and with others. I hope for our church here that we can be countercultural in the way that Jesus was. I pray for a community that is not a place to be seen, a place where the popular people go, but rather a church where my kids, and the people that we invite will know that they are loved for who they are, that they will be seen and genuinely cared for. I wanna be in a community where we are pushed, challenged, and even made uncomfortable at times, all in the name of Jesus, in the name of his radical and world-changing love. I long to be a part of a people who can model what God's kingdom will be, people of every shape and every size, every skin color, every orientation and every background, who can love God, love each other, and grow together.